Hello, how's it going? I wasn't expecting on doing a video today, funnily enough. Uh, if when the Where was I? Yeah, I wasn't planning on doing a video today, uh, even to the point that I lent somebody my lapel mic, so we've got camera mic right now, I'm getting it back tomorrow, so sorry for the dodgy audio. And also, you may notice I haven't had a shave today because I wasn't expecting on doing a video, but here we go, got a, bit of a, got a bit of a beard going on. But the reason I'm doing this video is because Disaster Radio on Twitter uploaded an image, I'm pretty sure it's photoshopped, it's a pretty good photoshop, but I mean it obviously is, we'll find out why in a second, of a Billy Bass synthesizer module. But yeah, I got tagged on this post a couple of times and I found myself uh, with a couple of hours free this evening so I figured why not let's let's just do it let's just do it. Funnily enough one of the first ever Look Mum No Computer build YouTube videos was about a Billy Bass that was modified uh, that was like four years ago if you want to see that the link to that is below if you want to circuit bend it shush Furby And also check out Simon the Magpie's Billy Bass Bass because that's just a genius play on words. So luckily I found a Billy Bass sitting about uh, in a box somewhere. It's a little bit busted as you can see the back. That battery bay has seen better days. The back of it isn't even connected anymore. And I seem to remember the reason why that is is because it doesn't work. Uh, this doesn't work and I remember the motor doesn't work. And why I know this motor doesn't work is because I personally burnt it out in a project quite a few years ago. It's all a little bit damp and this thing's quite rickety. But I have a sneaky suspicion that the actuators in the mouth and the tail I think may still work before I goes there. We've got tail control, what about mouth control? Here and here. Oh, we got the mouth! There is one slight problem, however. In the picture, well, it was photoshopped. And with Photoshop, you have this fantastic ability to be able to warp reality. And the sad thing is, is Billy Bass is a little bit too big for synthesizer modules. Uh, the Cosmo format is only slightly smaller than 5U, which is the Moog one, which is about that. Uh, but yeah. So when the image was put on top of the System 55, yeah, scale was not really a priority, which is fine, which is fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shave off the top and the bottom, and hopefully nobody will ever notice the difference. And since this circuit board doesn't work in this one, well, we're gonna put it aside. Wow, we'll put a piezo speaker on here as well, just so we've got a bit of sound creating output as well. That would be, that'd be cool. Anyway, let's get, let's get cutting first. Yeah, at least you can still see Big Mouth Billy Bass. It looks a bit cut down, but uh, you know, it's not gonna be a work of art, this thing, in the end of the day. Right, so this is the panel that we're gonna use. It's got a few holes in it. It's a bit of a castaway, and I'm gonna turn it up. So we're gonna put it here. In the picture, it has some knobs here, so we're gonna put the controls here. Uh, so it's gonna have an output for the piezo mic. May as well add a knob for the level of the piezo. Why not? Just adds a bit more look. And then an input for the uh, for that actuator and that actuator. Sadly, we can't get this doing it because I burnt out the motor on this one. And you know, it's sad, sad times, but we'll go with it. So input, input, knob, output, boom. <laughs> It's close enough, it's close enough. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wire in the piezo speaker, the contact microphone, whatever you wanna call it. What this does is it'll act like a microphone. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna get some super glue super glue it just right onto the back like this. The back wire is gonna wire into the sleeve of the jack socket, so that's the ground. So that's the part that connects to the sleeve of the jack. Uh, the red wire, you wire that to the uh, connector that connects to the tip of the jack, you know, like, um, that's the tip, that's the sleeve, so ground, that's the signal on the end. This one wires into the pad that connects to that, which is right here. However, we're gonna wire it in between this, which is gonna act as like a level, because why not? So we figure out which one's the max side, so it's this side that's gonna be. So we're gonna wire this into the middle. Gonna wire it into the middle leg. Middle leg. And then this side, we're gonna wire uh, up to here. So now it acts like a resistor in there. Like so. And then finally, this leg of the potentiometer, you should wire into ground. When you're twisting the knob, it goes between this side and that side. So when it's on zero, it's actually going to ground and it's not actually sending any signal at all. Dad! 
done. Right, so that's the contact microphone output with a volume control wired in. Now we need to figure out which wires uh, go to the actuators again. Yeah, what we're gonna use to wire in the actuators to the control voltage inputs is this. It's a MOSFET. It's a P16NF06, and it's a MOSFET that's perfect for controlling and doing this kind of job. The circuit that we're gonna do is, uh, just gotta remember what the circuit is. This is the MOSFET. We're gonna wire this via a 10K resistor to the, to the jack. <laughs> We're gonna wire this to ground. We're also gonna wire a 10K to ground that makes sure that this is always off when there's no electricity going in. And then for the mouth, which is these red and black wires, we're gonna wire this straight into the uh, black wire. And we're gonna wire the red wire, which is the positive, uh, into uh, the plus voltage, which we'll look at in a second. We're also gonna wire a diode. This stops the MOSFET from breaking from back EMF current. We're gonna wire a diode there. So this is the red wire, this is the black wire. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna see if I can make this whole circuit on the back of the jack socket so we don't need to bother with any circuit boards or anything like that. I've quickly put this together. This will offer the power that we need from a Eurorack power supply. So the Eurorack power supply wires into this and then the plus 12 volts goes through this thing. It looks the same as the MOSFET, but this is a voltage regulator, the 7805. So if you send in, I can't remember, like between eight and 15 volts through this leg, eight, uh, five volts comes out of here, as long as you and wire this middle one into ground. Uh, it says to use uh, capacitors and whatnot, but you could just get away with this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hot glue this, wire this leg into the red wire, which is the positive for the mouth, like in this circuit, this is the red circle, you know, the plus, and then the white wire, uh, which is the positive for the tail, and we'll hot glue that here. And then I need to wire a ground wire from here over to the ground over here. And this should be done and it should work. Let's, let's see. Oh, this is so sketchy. I would never really recommend to make a synth module like this, but I'm just saying you can if you're in a pinch. Just a quick amendment after testing, make this one only 1K, my bad, don't do 10K, do, do 1K. Right, so the wiring is done. This is by no means pretty, like it only took me about half an hour, but we have ourselves a Billy Bass, or Billy Bass, whichever way you look at it, uh, synth module. Uh, yep, it's pretty dodgy, uh, piezo speaker with a volume of jack out, and then there's two of these. Here's a closer look for people interested. It's literally that schematic, but I just, just made it up and wired it onto the actual thing. These MOSFETs are incredibly fragile. Uh, if they're wired in wrong, they will go pop, so just get a few if you're planning on doing this. Oops, I almost forgot this. Lovely jubbly. <laughs> Awesome, right, let's get this plugged in and see what it can do. Oh no, it's not gonna fit. Oh, it's gonna fit. Phew, whoa, jeez. Right, let's try this out. Right, it's plugged in, let the games begin. So we've got a vowel sound. And we're gonna get that plugged into his mouth and we'll see what that looks like. Right, so. Oh, oh, did you see that? the beat step pro and we'll trigger the tail with it so when we push this it does something I'm gonna pull down the release
how good is that? It actually works. Like I can trigger, I can trigger the tail, I can trigger the mouth. <laughs> the actuators are really quite quiet. All you can hear is sort of like the flubber and the rubber. But we're gonna plug it in. So we plug the microphone through the safety valve which boosts it to synthesizer levels and we'll see what it sounds like. Bit of delay. Uh, I'm not sure the contact mic really didn't add to it. Ooh. Sounds pretty cool when you hear it, but you know, actually the dancing tail and the dancing mouth is pretty amazing. I'm gonna try and find a replacement motor so we can get it going forwards because that would just be absolutely awesome. So that's it for the Billy Bass synth module. It took about half an hour to bash together and if you think you could do a better job, by all means, just go for it. The link to the Twitter thread is also below. I've been working quite a lot this past week on the Game Boy Mega Machine up for the next video update on it. There's more videos. I've been doing live streams and vlogs about it, uh, play it playing it for an hour and this and that on live streams and then talking about all of the ins and outs of what's been going on over on Patreon. So if you want to see that kind of stuff on the Game Boy Mega Machine as well as loads more content and supporting videos like this, even silly ones like this, then please go and check out over on my Patreon. Anyway, I've been learning my no computer. Don't be scared to try it. Maybe, maybe don't try this one. <laughs>